Hello and welcome back to AMBV. I'm Casper and today we're going to be talking about the things you should check when you purchase a used motorcycle by trying to purchase a used motorcycle. Whether you're buying a car or a motorcycle, you need to have an understanding of what your own expectations are in order to establish a checklist. Now, I'm going to be looking at purchasing a used Yamaha FZ1 as a practice bike for my girlfriend, so I will not have the same expectations as if it's a collectible vehicle where I expect provenance and records, but I want to make sure it's mechanically sound and that nothing that I'm going to be replacing or repairing is going to cost enough that I suddenly no longer have a good deal on my hands. I'm going to go down and attempt to negotiate to buy the bike very quickly and I won't have the cameras on because that makes everyone uncomfortable whenever you're trying to talk to somebody for the first time. But I'm going to try to buy it, get it back here and talk about the checklist I did before I wrote it as well as the checklist for any time I buy a bike and get it to my shop. So let's go ahead, get down there and see if we can buy a motorcycle. As you can see, obviously I bought the bike. Now this bike hasn't moved in a very long time, so I had to pump up the tires, get it some gas, and now I'm on the highway to bring it back. And of course, after handing over cash and signing a bunch of paperwork, it is now pouring down rain. So I'm taking an untested bike that hasn't moved in God knows how long and riding it back in the wet. I'll either find out what's wrong with it on the way home and end up in a ditch, or I will talk to you guys when I get to the shop and we can look this thing over. As you saw, I did purchase the bike and here it is. This is the 2004 Yamaha FZ1 that I am now going to be doing basic maintenance and review of. Now, anytime I buy a new bike, I have to first do sort of a pre-check to make sure I can ride it home because usually I don't like to load them up in trailers or trucks. And the first three things I'm always going to check on a bike that's been sitting is the tires, battery, and fuel. Now I checked ahead of time to find out that this bike had been sitting for about six months. So that tells me the tire pressure is probably going to be too low, the battery is probably going to be dead, and the fuel is going to be iffy condition at best. Usually in that short of time, the fuel hasn't completely gone bad, but you've picked up some moisture. And whether additives were added or not, they don't actually fully stabilize fuel. It still deteriorates and it still gets condensation in the tank. So I showed up with a jump pack prepared to jump the bike. I knew where there was a good tire pump facility and gas station nearby. And I was fortunate enough to be able to jump the bike and have it run perfectly. This bike is in amazing condition mechanically. Overall, the driving gear, the chain, the sprockets look good. The oil looked decent through the side glass. There was plenty in it. It wasn't an odd color, didn't look like it had a lot of moisture in it. The bike didn't get too hot while I idled it and tested it. And overall, it seemed like a good buy, so I picked it up. I immediately limped it down to the local gas station where I aired the tires all the way back up. They held pressure well. The front tire is definitely very old. It has some small dry rot cracks in it, but the back tire is quite a bit newer. In general, with motorcycle tires, you don't want them to be older than about six years for reliability and for the sake of grip. The tires harden over time. So I won't be racing this bike on these tires, but it'll work to get it around for right now until I can get over to the dealership. Now, once I had new fuel in it, I had the bike running and brought it back here, the rain came down. And now that is exactly the concern I have with riding a bike back that's untested. In the rain, your two big considerations for your tires are the age of the tires for grip and the amount of tread they have for dispersing water. Now the tread depth on these tires is pretty good. I didn't have any worries of hydroplaning, but I ensured this bike did not get lean too much and I did not accelerate too hard off of any stops because I did not want to drop it with these harder tires in place. With the bike back here, I can start doing my basic maintenance. And rather than making you wait for me to finish talking before I do that through the magic of editing, I will start doing it right now. Now, one of the first things I'll always do is change the oil on any vehicle. No matter what someone tells you, the oil has never been changed as far as you're concerned. It's not worth the money to risk not doing it. I always change the oil and the oil filter to ensure all the moisture that it's accumulated is gone, that the lubricating properties of the oil are what they should be and as expected, and that the oil filter is not in any way plugged or impeded. I will also change the coolant on this motorcycle. Motorcycles should have their coolant changed about every two years, and almost never is that the case with an owner in any sort of long-term situation or secondhand owner. So I'm going to assume this coolant hasn't been changed in at least five to 
the entire life of the motorcycle years. And I'm going to drain the system, fill it, bring it up to operating temperature with vinegar to descale the system like a coffee maker, flush it with fresh and clean water, and then go ahead and fill it with engine ice. Engine ice is a more expensive solution, but I really like the stuff. It does cut down the operating temperature of the bike. And on something like this, where there can be a lot of heat, it's kind of nice to keep the temperatures as cool as possible. While I have it on the maintenance stands, I will also be going around the bike looking for any other issues, checking the chain, making sure the tension looks good, ensuring the sprockets don't look too worn, the chain doesn't look like it's catching or has any bad links, and just basic review of the bike. The maintenance is complete and the bike looks to be a winner. Now, there's a few things I didn't really mention in the initial review of what you should check on a bike. You should always check the lights and things like that. But ultimately, if nothing's hanging off and most of the systems work, you can get away with riding it. You just wanna make sure the safety components and mechanical components are in good working order. As long as the brakes function, as long as the tires function, and as long as the engine seems like it's in a condition where it can keep running, you can do hand signals to get by and not be pulled over by a cop. Now in the case of this particular motorcycle, everything seems to be working great. The battery even came back to life and is working, so there's really not much to complain about. The few little scuffs here and there and the crack in the fairing, I'm not going to repair until my girlfriend's done practicing with the bike. A practice bike is there to be practiced with and may or may not fall into the gravel from time to time, and you don't want to have spent too much money and time on making it look pretty before this happens. Now, this bike is an exceptionally dependable platform. These bikes rarely have issues anyway, so I was very confident in the engine condition. If I were less confident in the condition, I may have actually done an oil change on site, or at least brought with me the means by which to check the oil, or had it taken over for a pre-purchase inspection. If you're going to be investing more money into a car or motorcycle that's not tested and you know very little about, I would highly recommend just play, paying the hundred bucks at a dealership to take it over, have someone else go ahead and put it up on a rack or put it up on a table and check the fluids and check everything to make sure you're not missing something in somebody's driveway. If you have any questions about this particular bike or what I did in my general walkthroughs, please leave them in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.